Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to remove elements from an array using slice instead of splice. A uh, common pattern while working with arrays is when you want to remove items and keep the rest of the array. JavaScript offers the splice method for this, which takes an argument from the index of where to start removing items and then the number of items to remove. If the second argument is not provided, the default is to remove items through to the end. However, the splice method mutates the original array it is called on. Here's an example. Cities, we've got Chicago, Delhi, Islamabad, London, and Berlin. Cities.splice, three to one, zero, one, two, three, three. So it just removes London, Chicago, Delhi, Islamabad, Berlin. Um, but that's the thing, cities is altered. So this is actually what cities is now. So this is actually a, a destructive uh, function to call it on arrays, <clears throat> which is fine if that's what you want to do, but uh, there might be another way. As we saw in the last challenge, the slice method does not mutate the array, <clears throat> the original array, but returns a new one, which can be saved into a variable. Recall that slice method takes two arguments for the ind for the indices to return and uh, to begin and end the slice. The end is not inclusive and returns those items in a new array. Using slice method instead of splice helps avoid any array mutating side effects. Rewrite the function non-mutating splice by using slice instead of splice. It should limit the provided cities array. It should provide it, uh, it should limit the provided cities array to a length of three and return a new array with only the first three items. Do not mutate the original array provided to the function. So non <clears throat> non-mutating slice splice. Uh, cities, we pass in cities, we say cities.splice3 and uh, input cities. Okay, so let's console.log. Let's just look specifically at what's happening here. The input cities. Um, and then we say uh, array should not change. So uh, let's just say should not change. And then I'm just going to expand this a little bit so we get a little bit better. Uh, so we can read this. EP. Now, right now, yeah, these, these should not say. So these, these are the input cities. And right now, what this function is doing, the non-mutating splice, is it's splicing these out. So it is mutating this array. And therefore, that's not what we want. Um, I, can we just remove the S? So now these aren't changing. So now we're just slicing it out. But uh, let's say, what happens here? Do we know... So if we console log this, uh, we're just getting London and Berlin. London and Berlin, nice. Is that what we want? Non-mutating slice, Chicago, Delhi, should return one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, okay, so we're passing in the same thing and it should return Chicago, Delhi, and Islamabad. However, it's just returning London and Berlin. So we want to re rewrite this function, the non-mutating splice, by using slice instead of splice. Uh, so a new array with only the first three items. So we want to go zero to three. So we just return the first three items. So Chicago, Delhi, Islamabad. So that should be the right answer. Now, okay, so this is the the slice thing. This is pretty. Uh, this is this should, should be non-mutating splice recover the first three items. That would make more sense to name this function that way because then you wouldn't have to guess as to why it's just pulling out the first three items. The main thing that they're trying to show here is that splice mutates the original data. This is the same lesson that they've kind of been going over for the past three lessons. The whole idea is that you don't want to have functions that alter global variables in their functions. And so here, we're not doing that. The, this one stays the same, but we still have the first three, which is the purpose of this function. Anyways, run the tests and they pass. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.